Where have you been? Why are you here? And where are you going? You look at your life, you look at what you produce. Is it giving you what you want? Are you living on purpose? Are you living your dream? Are you acting on your ideas? Are you doing all you can do? Have you gotten comfortable? Are you procrastinating? Are you evading your own greatness? Are you surrounding yourself with people that can nourish you? Are you challenging yourself? Are you experimenting? Are you learning something different? Is your life an adventure or is it boring? Why are you here? What brought you here? Investing the time, the money. What brought you here? What decisions are you making right now as you look into the future? Where are you going with your life? I don't care how hard you fail. I don't care how many times you fail the test. I don't care if nobody don't believe in you. It only takes you believing in yourself to get this thing done. As long as you believe in you, you got the right mindset, you got the right attitude, you can have whatever you like. But if you fall, I need you to fall forward. I need you to fail forward. Now, are there going to be some moments when you want to give up? Yes. Will there be some moments when it's going to seem like it's impossible the pain that you're experiencing, the disappointment that you're experiencing, that you're gonna say, it's not worth it? Yes, that's, that's gonna be right there for you. It's, it's gonna be in your face, telling you to go back. But don't let the distractions distract you, all right? You gotta keep moving, don't stop. Separate what you do from who you are. That's what the guilt trap is about. All of us have made some mistakes in life. All of us have done some things that if we had them to do over again, we wouldn't do it again. A lot of things that if I had it to do over again, if I knew then what I know now, I would have done it differently. Well, it didn't happen that way. Maybe you're, about, you, maybe you're worried about what people think of you, what people say about you. Just that fear paralyzes you. And I just want to ask you today, do you think you have hope? Right. <laughs> I've actually given up on these at the minute. You've given up on them? <laughs> Told you, you do some, heavy, joking, you do some heavy pulling. <laughs> it's another percent off. <laughs> <laughs> so a kilo like? worth of fat, pretty much. Um, and you're still retaining uh, muscle tissue. So very, very good. So there are your main stats there. One. So just, just over 7% now. Sound. Your earliest one was this one here so, so you started at 11 and a half percent so you pretty much had a percent drop every single week now which is yeah so for me that's yeah, a big um, difference to yeah, really 2016 after that. Yeah. in 2016 which was my lowest ever recording and our last recording together for the Olympia uh, my measurements they were good but they were very sporadic weren't they they were up and down um, I had a drastic drop halfway through my prep and that was due to me cutting a lot of carbs out, a lot of calories, not just carbs, it was fats, protein, uh, increasing my expenditure, doing a lot more, um, like three sessions a day. It was, just, it was just too much, but I did get in shape, but I lost a lot of muscle tissue. So this prep, we wanted to be very specific. We wanted to measure every week, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, and just come down really gradual. Um, and yeah, so far, so 12 weeks out, or 11 weeks out, did you say? 
So, so I was 11.5% when I started 12 weeks out. Mm. I started at 16, but we started measuring at 12. And um, yeah, 11.5%, and then each week, we've gradually come down by near enough a percentage each time. And we're now down to, what, 7%? Yeah. Yeah. So six weeks out, 7% body fat. So we've still got a bit to go, but we're coming down in the right areas. And still retaining muscle mass, which yeah. is the main thing, so. Five weeks, four weeks, I've got to be down. 2% there, mate, which means... No, two mil. Two mil, yeah, sorry, two mil, sorry. Yeah. You're, you're a different athlete now, you know, mm. you're, you're a different beast, you've got a lot more muscle mass, and obviously you, you've got a new approach to, to prepping, so. So so that's abs, where's yeah. the, the sides, is that super? Yeah, so super really acts, so that's there, look. That's so you've the had side. nearly, literally nearly full on mil come off there this week, whereas that kind of got stuck a little bit. That's crazy, that's 4.8, that's 4.6. Mm. But you're measuring me on my baseline day, so, yeah, exactly. so it'll yeah. be kind of perfect. So it gives me two days to fill back up kind of or regulate on my baseline. Mm. And then Wednesday is that reading. So it's probably good that we measure on this day. It's consistent, yeah, because yeah. it's like I said, it's, it's happened, it's falling nicely with your periodization of your nutrition, which is yeah. key. It's no good measuring you on high carb yeah. day one week, low carb day the yeah. next yeah. four, you know, and that's the, the difference this year is that We've actually got Very some level of consistency, it. yeah. So a lot of people ask uh, how I train and what's the reasons behind it. For me, I'm very sporadic in my training. Um, today you'll see that it, there's no set, like one week I'll be going heavy, the next week I'll be going light. It's just how I feel on the day. I, um, I assess like my strength, my tiredness, uh, how I'm feeling before I go into the gym. Uh, and then I tailor my, my workout to that. Um, I am favoring a lot of like time under tension, a lot of drop sets, supersets, volume. Uh, training at the minute um, because obviously I'm dieting I'm trying to expend calories and I've not had a training partner for a few weeks as he's been away uh, on holiday so I don't really want to be going mass heavy weight and, and risking injury uh, this style of training is, is good for getting the heart rate up uh, burning that fat but still putting blood into the muscle group I'm working So we are six weeks out from the Mr. Olympia and today we train shoulders down at Fusion 3 in Stamford. The first exercise was a dumbbell uh, overhead press and we went for four to five working sets with a drop set to finish, which is hitting the anterior head. We then moved on to the medial head with a side lateral raise with dumbbell. Again, more for isolation, increasing weight each set um, and really focusing on that squeeze.
then went on to the posterior head, which is the rear delt, uh, and that was on a cable uh, rear fly. We did them singular just to give them more focus, um, and we used the cable uh, for constant tension for our movement, so both eccentric and concentric part. We then moved on to shrugs uh, to hit our traps. Uh, again, increasing the weight, and then to finish, we did a superset, which was a dumbbell singular front raise superset with a plate loaded raise. Uh, so for me, I've always believed shoulders are a key part in physique um, because it obviously gives you the round, round uh, 3D effect and it, it gives a more tapered waist look. So the bigger your shoulders are, the more tighter, smaller waist is going to look. It's something I've uh, really focused on over the years uh, and tried to get that round 3D look. As well, I think it's very important to hit all three heads of the shoulders because when you're on stage doing your quarter turns uh, from the rear, from the front, it's always good to show 3D and um, yeah, some more depth to your physique. If you only concentrate on a press or you concentrate on a front raise, you're not going to get the overall desired look, what the judges are looking for on stage. Just a trigger point. Um, so Ryan was struggling a little bit at the start of the prep, about 15, 16 weeks out, just with this this shoulder. Um, got a few treatments, so just keeping on top of it really. It just had, you know, quite a few niggles, injuries, issues, um, a little bit in the back on it. So especially for yeah, for his posing, opening these up and just really getting that and if you do look at it closely if you know what you're looking for you can actually see like a little adjustment here and there just on the on the one side not really suffering from any 
any injuries, um, any problem areas. Um, just said he was feeling a bit tight in the hamstrings, so we're just gonna gonna spend a little bit more time on them today. But apart from that, just it's just a maintenance thing now. So he's got to that level where you know he's training and everything, and the recovery all comes together. Yeah, I think we've got most of them right. The Muscle Foods are my sponsors who we have recently started working together for this Olympia. I wanted to go back to basics and instead of using a prep company, I wanted to um, get my raw ingredients, fresh organic meats, uh, fresh organic uh, vegetables and do it myself. Uh, like I used to do in the old days, got a bit lazy over the years, uh, but I wanted to go back and prep every meal out of this kitchen like I've done for the last 10 years. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like I got a better results from that. So I'm going to quickly show you what I order on a weekly basis. We've got basmati rice. The packeted rice is quite good in the fact that it's very easy, quick and simple to cook. 10 kg sweet potato. Again, another complex carb, and that's something I would take in the evening, um, my last meal, in fact, of the day, which all my meals, which I have six meals a day, all of them have a carb source. Um, it's just a different complex carb throughout the day. The white potato, that's in an evening with my steak. Turkey breast and our chicken fillets as well in the day. Salmon with my sweet potato in the evening, which is my last meal of the, uh, of the evening, which is fillet steaks. And that is my second to last meal. So as you can see, the protein sources in the evening go towards uh, essential fats. So obviously steak, my salmon, uh, things like that in the evening. I'll go for my white fish, white meat uh, in the day, and I'll go for eggs and whey protein first thing in the morning. I'll have some sort of green veg. My go-to is asparagus, but obviously I have broccoli, um, anything green basically in, in each meal. Just the portion sizes change as I get closer to, to competition. So we're now at six weeks out. I've been dieting for 10 weeks already, and I haven't really touched my food. I've got high food, high calories going in at the minute, a lot of complex carbs, a lot of essential fats, and mediocre protein. Um, but over the next few weeks, it's where we're really gonna taper in and start to reduce my carbs down. Uh, increase my fat slightly, have low days, baseline days, and even higher carb days, just to spike your metabolism and keep you fired up and your body guessing. Uh, when I started, it was on mass amounts of food. And the reason for that is, you want to start a prep as much as you can, as much calories as you can, uh, because your body's used to that amount. And then at least you've got somewhere to go from there. You can taper down your food, as well as increasing your expenditure in the gym. And that way, you're not going to be dieting on 1,100 calories 12 weeks out and you've got nowhere to go. So uh, your body will shut down and it won't work efficiently. So for me, making bodybuilding a lifestyle, it's easier when I come to diet, because the food sources I'm taking throughout the year is what I would prep for for a show. It's just varied in, in like I say, in, in the portion sizes. So always make sure, if you are dieting, that you enjoy the food types you're eating because you've got to try and sustain it for 365 days a year because bodybuilding isn't a 12 week prep, it's a lifestyle. So for me, I try and keep everything clean so then when I come to diet, it's a lot easier and my body is used to the food and it becomes more efficient.